Hello everyone, we are back. This is chapter one, part three. In this part, we'll continue with the four questions that are asked in public finance. And we are going to cover question two, three, and four here. So the four questions of public finance, when should the government intervene in the economy? We covered this in the previous part. Uh, how might the government intervene? What is the effect of these interventions? And why do governments choose to intervene in the way they do? Okay, let's get started. How might the government intervene? This is question number two. So one way for government to intervene is the price mechanism. This is taxes and subsidies. Taxes rise the price of a product for private sales or purchases of goods that are overproduced. So government taxes the products it thinks it's uh, overproduced and to generate revenue. Subsidies lower the price for the private sales or purchases of goods that are over uh, that are underproduced. Sorry about that. So underproduced, for instance, government has been subsidizing some um, solar power or energy efficient appliances, so on and so forth. Tax credits, on the other hand, they lower the effective price of health insurance. So we used to have government provided insurance options and government would give tax credits for purchasing it in the marketplaces. So the second way government intervene is restrict production or mandating. So, so you, you either restrict the production of a good or service or you mandate that people buy the service. So quotas, for instance, restrict the private sale of goods that are overproduced. So example of quotas are we have import quotas. Uh, for instance, we have textile import quotas to protect the local producers and then different countries take up on that share. They share these uh, import quotas. For instance, China has the most of this import quotas for clothing. Mandates require private purchase of goods that are underproduced. So with health insurance, government mandated health insurance. This was taken off after a while. Pay or play mandates that require employers to provide health insurance, such as California's Health Insurance Act. This is an older act. Another way government intervene is that public provision Public provision is government directly uh, providing the good or service directly. This is, a, for instance, uh, used in Medicare program for U.S. senior citizens. Medicare is provided by the government. Another one is public financing or private provision. So governments pay, private companies produce services. Medicare prescription drug cards uh, are where it works, so Companies are hired to provide this service. However, government pays for it. So question number three is what are the effects of alternative interventions? So this is something we'll learn in empirical public finance. Uh, we usually focus on direct and indirect effects of government actions. So what's the direct effect? Direct effect assume that there's no behavioral responses. So for instance, I want to provide roads for the city, I am putting in city, people use these roads uh, to commute, right? So that's a direct effect. Direct effects assume no behavioral responses. So basically, intended consequences happen. For instance, we have 49 million, we had 49 million uninsured in 2007. And providing universal health insurance covers all these 49 million people who were previously uninsured. We also have something called unintended consequences. These are the direct effects and these arise because people change their behaviors uh, after an intervention. So what if, what if people who were initially had insurance to their companies, but it's cheaper, the government provided insurance is cheaper. What if they switch to this uh, government universal health care, then what happens is that you now have more than 49 million people to insure. Okay. So if people drop private coverage and many more people may end up covered in public plan, this is an unintended consequence. This is called the law of unintended consequences. So there is a really funny story real quick in one 30 seconds. I'm going to tell you a, a famous economist, Stephen Levitt, he runs the Freakonomics podcast and website and everything. And then he, one day, trying to, he's trying to train his 
putty training aid daughter for putty training, right? So he tells her, hey, if every time you go tell me I need to go potty, I'll give you an M&M or something like that, right? So then she goes to the bathroom. She gets the M&M. Great, right? The child is getting potty trained. So this is the direct effect. But after a while, she learns about bladder control. So he says, Daddy, I need to go to the bathroom. Goes to the bathroom. Gets the candy. Five minutes later, Daddy, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> gets the candy again. So that's an indirect effect. So this is love unintended consequences. He didn't expect that she would start uh, sneakily control her bladder. Okay. So let's talk about CBO. CBO is government scorekeepers. What is CBO? Congressional Budget Office. Congressional Budget Office provides nonpartisan. It's really important. It's nonpartisan. They don't care about the ruling party, incumbent, this and that. They only care about the economic impact of policy. So CBO Congressional Budget Office provides nonpartisan analysis needed for economic decisions of government. Okay, so they play a role of scorekeeper by estimating costs of different projects. So uh, CBO uses theoretical and empirical tools of fi public finance. So these are stuff we are going to learn in Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. It's coming up. CBO scores can determine the fate of any legislation. For instance, in 1994, uh, Bill Clinton, then President Bill Clinton, suggested a health care plan, and this was going to be universal health care for everybody. However, this was unfortunately not accepted because CBO said it's going to cost a lot of money. So CBO estimated really outrageous costs, and then it just died. So why do governments do what they do? This is question number four. Governments do not simply... So this is a theory, okay? We're going to talk about this. Governments do not always behave as benign actors and intervene only because of market failure or redistribution, okay? So in the tools of political economy, this is chapter nine, we are going to learn... Uh, we're going to learn sometimes governments act in a bad way, okay? So political economy is a theory of how political process produces decisions that would affect people and society. So uh, there, there, there's one theory, you know, says that sometimes government needs to be reigned. And right now we are talking about, I uh, I work for Texas A&M Corpus Christi University, and it's in Texas and the um, Governor of Texas was talking about a uh, Texan constitution saying that it actually gives government a very limited number of powers, makes the elected officials weak. So I think the um, lieutenant, lieutenant government governor, he is suggesting that uh, we should look into it and change and give government more power. So we have in political economy, we are going to learn about some theories of government and it's coming up. So how governments make public policy decisions? Governments are there to figure out what people want and match policies with people's wants. Okay, so that's exactly what they should do. Like market failures create market inefficiency. Sometimes we have government failures that lead to inappropriate government intervention. So nobody's perfect. We do have some issues sometimes. Okay, so questions of public finance were very important during COVID-19. So let's ask this first question. When should the government intervene? So COVID-19 pandemic brought about a huge number of government interventions so some questions were felt at the personal privacy level, such as whether uh, we are all required to be wearing masks, right? Other questions of direct government intervention in businesses, such as whether states should require businesses to shut down. So that is, should they have mandate? So on each of these uh, topics, there are fundamental disagreements against the political spectrum and political standing. OK, so second question, how should the government intervene? The question of how intervene was really, really central in the uh, congressional debates over the provision of CARES Act and substantial uh, 
help to public and also subsequent extensions. Okay, so for instance, Democrats favored mandates for masks, while Republicans proposed looser guidelines. Democrats favored expansions in benefits for unemployed individuals, while Republicans favored loans to businesses. So you'll see in Republican point of view, it's more business centered. Democrats uh, tend to be more individual direct help centered. Okay, number three, what are the effects of these interventions? So what happened, right? So economic research actually had very different answers to these. Some studies show that government activities to limit economic activity had only modest effects. So businesses did everything to fight to stay open. Other studies show that the government's paycheck protection program that help businesses did not save many jobs. So this was kind of sad because some businesses actually abused this program, unfortunately. Other studies show that the unemployment insurance expansions through the CARES Act led to much higher consumption. What I was telling you, you know, car sales went up, so on and so forth, because people have more disposable income and did not appear to deter their return to work. So that's great, right? You give unemployment benefit extension, but uh, people did still go back to work. Great, but it kind of meant higher consumption. So the fourth question is, why do governments do what they do? It is really important to see how response to COVID-19 actually makes us different, right? Under Republican control of Congress, this was the beginning of COVID-19, the relief bill included more money for PPP, this is business-centered intervention, than it did for extended unemployment insurance and no money for state and local governments. When Democrats gained control, this is the second year of COVID, they proposed a new approach that placed much more focus on unemployment insurance individuals and funding for local and state governments okay so i will see you in part four part four is really important in this part we're going to learn about current size and effects on government united states and the world i call it episode one we'll also have episode two that's going to be part five i'll see you there